The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. What a day here. And I'm so jealous The case the producer who, if you're just joining us, maybe you never heard this this thing that started here a couple months back where Case, for years, I've ripped on him for whenever I make a movie reference, he doesn't get it because he hasn't seen most of the major big movies out there. His number one movie was Boys in the Hood, and great movie. Great movie. You can see other ones. But it was the only one he saw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, it's my favorite. I'm yeah. like, well, you've only seen one yeah. movie. <laughs> There's nothing to compare it to. Yeah. Um, so now he has seen over the last several months Shawshank Redemption, Braveheart, uh, Dirty Dancing, Roadhouse. Matrix. Oh, so many good movies. And then yesterday he got to watch Pulp Fiction. The 30th anniversary of the movie is later this year in October. And what I would call before I saw Shawshank uh, the greatest movie of all time, and I still think it's in the argument, no question, Pulp Fiction. But we're curious in the lens of a 25-year-old seeing the movie 30 years later how that how that feels because this to me was a movie of the 90s of the vibe of everything with it and the most amazing all-star cast of all time quentin tarantino became a legend after this even though reservoir dogs was before this movie but still so case oh, that's right good poll yeah oh but case your take on pulp fiction seeing it for the first time and it's all you so there's like all these stories in the movie there's mm-hmm. just a lot happening right yeah there's samuel L. jackson and john travolta they're doing their own thing bruce willis is a boxer mm-hmm. with a weird whiny girlfriend and that's like its own thing mm-hmm. and then there's marcellus who reminded me of the guy in lilo and stitch that comes to get stitch one stitch gets to hawaii <laughs> i didn't know if it was the same guy doing the voice or not i didn't look it up but he gave me big lilo and stitch energy okay so there's all these stories in this movie yeah and it's out of order and it's a little confusing, and I don't fully know what's happening at every point in the movie. But by the time it was done, by the time they're in the diner, and the briefcase is opened, and the briefcase is closed. Well, don't ruin it. And Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> spoiler. What did Kenzie oh spoil? <laughs> Kenzie spoiled Ratatouille earlier. <laughs> you and spoiled I, Rocky IV earlier this week. God, we've done a bad job of <laughs> keeping people up on movies. By the time Samuel L. Jackson talks that guy out of robbing the diner, which... Samuel Jackson calls him Ringo, but I don't think his name was Ringo. Well, he called him Ringo because he had an English accent. What a cool thing to do, by the way. <laughs> yes, what, what, what a badass move that was. Yeah. But the time is all said and done. All of these stories intertwining, out of order, confusing, Bruce Willis, boxer, Samuel L. Jackson, John Travolta. Yes. This might have been the greatest movie I've ever seen. Oh. This was, I, the thing with Shawshank was I watched Shawshank and I was like, boom, boom. Got it. This is great. This is obviously great. I know what this movie is. I don't have to watch it for a while now. Pulp Fiction, it was so great. I feel like I need to watch it 10 more times to fully understand what I saw. Yeah, you, if you watch it again, you're going to notice other oh stuff. Oh, my God. So much. there is so much going on, it is a watch more than one's movie. Shawshank's a little disturbing. It's like things happen to people that I really don't want to watch again. <laughs> I would argue in first Pulp, time. I, I would argue in Pulp Fiction also some pretty disturbing scenes. Yeah, Iro- but ironic- you should see him again. I don't know. <laughs> Ironically, the same thing that's disturbing that happened in Shawshank mm-hmm. happened in Pulp Fiction. It's a pretty disturbing thing to happen. <laughs> <laughs> in general, to people, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I, I mean, oh my God, Brian, what was the? How did you feel after watching this for the first time? Well, the word is disturbed. I, it, I felt like. I was not on Earth uh-huh. for two days. I understand completely what you... Okay, that makes sense. It was a groundbreaking thing to see. And first off, with all those stars in it, too, that were never typically in a movie like that. Because it's Travolta, who I have questions on later, Samuel L. Jackson, <laughs> yeah. Bruce Willis, Christopher Walken just shows up and does one scene, hits Co- it out of the park. Correct. God, I love Christopher Walken. Oh, my yeah. God. Just the best. I, um, a whole scene about talking about a watch that he brought back <laughs> from Vietnam from and, his, and Bruce Willis's dad's, you know, you know what? Yeah. Uma Thurman. I don't know if she was famous. I don't know much about Uma Thurman other than the Fall Out Boy song, well, but I liked pre, her. This is pre-Kill Bill. Okay, yeah, yeah, it is. This is Uma Thurman at that point had kind of done fun movies, I would say. Like fun 80s type movies. There's a Really? Yeah, she had not done a movie. I, well, no one had done a movie like this, obviously. She, she never, you can't even compare this to a different movie. <laughs> That's what's hard to say about it. No she had one, never overdosed in a movie before is what yeah. you're saying? Um, and to me, one of the greatest performances ever, who's been, a guy who's been in a ton of movies, and comedically is Eric Stoltz as the drug dealer. Oh, he's awesome. He is unreal. <laughs> 
Do not bring that poop on to my house. Prank caller, prank caller. That's the thing, the prank caller. He's like, I don't know you, I don't know you. Where's my little black medical book? Where is it? I have a little black medical book. The day I bring a drug overdose girl to you put the needle in her chest. Case, because you've watched this TV show, don't you think Uma Thurman, had this been a current movie, could have been like Euphoria? Oh, yeah. It's very Euphoria uh-huh, vibes. Yeah, That's a good poll. Yeah. That's how I feel. Like It's like the old euphoria almost mm-hmm. in a weird way like the trippiness and everything well she's just one of those people that regardless of how physically attractive she is and i think she's very good looking she's so cool that i just immediately wanted to sleep with her it was just like oh god if i if i could only attain somebody that cool in my life i'd feel so much better about myself well that's a mean thing to say because you have a girlfriend well, she's awesome too but you just said if i could only attain somebody that cool but we we can't do the dance like her and john travolta did we're not that cool that's another thing, unexpected. Even though John Travolta, obviously known as a dancer from Saturday Night Fever before that movie. But this he, character doesn't look like he can dance. Correct. <laughs> He's a hitman. It's different. He's a, a dark, morose hitman. Can I can I ask you about John Travolta? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Like, he was he in Greece? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's wow. what I... <laughs> <laughs> we'll start there. He was in Greece. Woof. Uh, you got to be kidding me. Was this seen as a big pivot for him? doing this movie because i don't have i didn't know he was in this his, i will say his how he looks because he doesn't look attractive was weird at that point because he was supposed to be like a heartthrob in greece oh yeah and he's supposed to heartthrob in a few movies and he's not attractive this had to be one of the first movies he didn't come across as attractive wouldn't you say yes and also his career had died he, okay he, his career had died it stalled out on movies and he didn't have anything going on and apparently him and Qu- quentin tarantino was always fascinated with those guys the I guess the stars of the 70s, 80s, he always he always has a tribute to those that era. And there's a, a story recently I even saw that John Travolta was helping Quentin Tarantino do his taxes. <laughs> and well, he's that, a good guy. <laughs> and that's how they became friends, and he got him in the movie. He always wanted him in... He had, you know, Quentin Tarantino worked at a video store, and he wrote this movie, apparently, while he was working at a video store. Yeah. And God, I wish I could. I'm going to start writing a movie while I'm here, just to be more productive. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop, stop using TurboTax. I can get a movie star to do my taxes. That's Amen. right. Oh, exactly. my God. He's got to hit up Quentin as if he needs a new guy. Now that Travolta is so popular. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Now, what about Samuel L. Jackson? Was he famous at this point? Because I, I only know him as Mace Window. I wouldn't say... <laughs> It's unbelievable. Purple lightsaber, baby. Yeah. Well, again, Samuel Jackson. I was going to say, I don't know what you're talking about, but then he's a lightsaber. So, okay. Samuel Jackson was has been in over 100 movies. Mm-hmm. So he's known for being prolific and just being in movies. Yeah. And But he was also not near this famous. This made him as well. Him and John Travolta both. John Travolta already was big famous, but then his career died. I wouldn't say Samuel Jackson was famous at all until this movie, and then he really got bigger roles, but he's been in so many movies. I've seen Samuel L. Jackson in more Capital One commercials than I have movies, <laughs> which feels like something I need to change, because yeah. he was, that's my favorite character. Like, you quote Shawshank all the time, which I get, great movie. I'm surprised you don't quote this more, because I feel like you feel like, on the inside, you are Samuel L. Jackson's character in this movie. You carry yourself with that level of swagger. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> I do this Pulp Fiction lines to my other friends. Because you haven't appreciated it. I don't waste them on you. But now I won't. Now I'll start using them with you. Oh, I mean, the, the quarter powder with cheese stuff. Like, I love all the talking in this movie. I, yeah. I like, I like die. I don't like action movies a yeah. lot of the time. Like, superhero movies do nothing for me. I like this movie because, was it violent? Yes. Was it disturbing? Yes. But it's super funny. Um, let me ask you this question, since you saw Pulp Fiction for the first time. Yeah. I'll, ask, I'll ask Kenzie this, too, because she's seen it. A long time what do you think? Ago. What do you think's in the briefcase? Because that's the basis of the whole movie. In a lot of the scenes, is, is chasing the briefcase to bring back the Ving Rhames character, Marcellus Wallace. What do K- you think, Kenzie? What, you- what do you think's in the briefcase? No, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed the whole time it was heroin. Heroin, which cool, you know, I, makes sense yeah. for what Ving Rhames does and the, uh, Marcellus Wallace does. The, the lock is six six six. That's bad. Heroin's yep. bad. It makes sense. Yep. And there's a lot of heroin throughout the whole movie. A lot of heroin throughout the movie. Uh, what do you think? It's in the briefcase, Kenzie. Body parts. Body parts. Yeah. Maybe somebody killed and they're. Yeah. You know. And I always thought there was gonna be a second one, because like guess we killed. And it ruins the whole thing. And you got to, like, you know, it's like a furthering of the plot. Because they never tell you what's right. in the briefcase. So I'm saying, then you find out, oh, my God, I can't believe he killed this person. And then now you're going to do a sequel. Do you want to know what's in the briefcase? How do you know? I've what done did a John lot. Travolta call you? I've done a lot of, yes. He was doing his taxes. Yeah. A lot of research on this movie. What? What's in the briefcase? What is it? 
What is in the briefcase, as you notice in the first scene when they go to the uh, guy's house who, when they kill all the guys? Sorry for the opening scene, spoiler. <laughs> uh, but they get the briefcase, and John Travolta opens it, and there's this light that comes out on his face. Yeah. And then, then that's when Samuel Jackson goes, we good? He goes, oh, we good. We good. We got it. What's in the briefcase is Marcellus Wallace's soul. His that's- soul is in the case. And so he wants it back. He's, he has everything. Marcellus Wallace has everything. He's got the drug ring. He's got the prostitution. He's got everything. He owns the city. What well, a guy. That's just not practical. Why not? Why put your soul in a briefcase? Well, it's, that's just where it is. His well, soul it doesn't is in work the, like that. Well, I don't know what, how it I works. I can't but, put your soul in a briefcase right now. Well, his soul is in the briefcase. Because if you look at the also scene when he's talking to Bruce Willis about throwing the fight, mm-hmm. they show the back of Marcellus Wallace's head, and he has a Band-Aid on the back of his neck, a tiny Band-Aid on the back of his neck. Which well, I, assumed, soul out. I, I assumed that was a big Razor incident. Yeah, that is where you take your soul. The devil takes your soul from the back of your neck. Okay. And that's how, so the devil had taken Bing Raim's soul, it got into a briefcase somehow, I can't can make the, connect the dots on that one, and he got, it ba- he got it back, and they're fighting for it, and that's how he got it back, and his soul's in the briefcase. Yep. Um, did somebody tell you that, or...? Kind of did a lot of research on the movie, Kenzie. Okay. That's right. I want a deep, 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 deep dive. I just dive. feel like that's up for interpretation. I feel like I need to watch the movie again now. Well, you... Well, you, it's just impossible to put a soul in a briefcase. It's not a sweater. I can, I can buy into the soul being into the briefcase. I'm on board with that thought process. You're thinking about it too analytically. Yeah. His soul is in the briefcase. Well, it's impossible. It's, it's not impossible. When you How do you, you know, by the way? <laughs> How do you know you can't put a soul in a briefcase? Have you ever seen a soul in a briefcase? I've never seen a soul. Exactly. Wow. But I don't know where they can go. And maybe they can go into a briefcase. And I don't think they're shiny. <laughs> it's a, it's a light. It's, light it's, a, it's the essence of his soul, the light. I don't think so. No. I'm Just into it. Shi- if they're that bright, you would see them around, out and about. No, because they're inside your body. They're covering oh. up the light. I open, open your mouth. I can see, I can see the light. <laughs> open your mouth and say, ah. Oh. Oh, there's your soul. I just saw your soul. Uh, we leave you with the scene, uh, one of the greatest monologues of all time in movie history from Samuel Jackson as Jules in Pulp Fiction. I just want you to know how sorry we are that, that things got so f***ed up with us and, and Mr. Wallace. It, 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 when we, we got into this thing with the best intentions, really. I never... <laughs> wow, oh, didn't see sorry. that coming, did, did you? break your concentration? <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Please, continue. You were saying something about best intentions? What's the matter? Oh, you were finished? <laughs> oh, well, allow me to retort. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? <laughs> what country are you from? What? what? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak <laughs> English in what? What? English, mother f- do you speak it? <laughs> yes. Then you know what I'm saying. Yes. Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. What? Say what again. <laughs> Say what again. <laughs> I dare you. I double dare you, mother f- Say what one more goddamn time. <laughs> He's black. Go on. He's bald. Does he look like a bitch? (laughs) Does he look like a bitch? No! Then why you try to f him like a bitch? (laughs) Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Oh, Oh, the best ever. It might be the best movie I've ever seen. No question. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q. 101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And uh, looking like a glorious weekend. Can't wait to see you on the streets as we'll be out there from the north side or I'll be at Wrigley Field. Case will be in Cicero tomorrow night. Shouts out. Kenzie's going to be on TV in about an hour and a half on Got a Scoot here pretty soon. ABC7. Happy Mother's Day, Kenzie. Thank you. And happy Mother's Day to all the ladies out there, including my wife. My wife. What's her name? Oh, Megan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, 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 not I. a good thing to say. <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your mom's name, Gloria? My mom's name is Gloria. Happy Mother's Day to Gloria and all my sister-in-laws. That'd be Amy, Nancy, and uh, Lynn. <laughs> I just hit this weird... I, I got a stroke like three seconds ago. This weird thing just okay? hit me. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, need a do- wrap it up. I, think, I think I need a donut. Happy Mother's Day to Julia. I remembered your name, and you're a great mother. I appreciate it. Wow. Uh, anything for your mother, Kenzie? I love her. It's my best friend. <laughs> there you go. Literally. You want to throw her name out? Um... Not really. Or not her first name? Uh, just uh, Mrs. K. I, just, <laughs> okay, I really go. don't like when my mom gets harassed on social media. She's pretty hot, uh. so I try to leave her alone. <laughs> I've had a lot of people look her up, and they just I like when she gets left alone. Mm. Uh, takeaways here. Let's go, Case. Brian, or I'm sorry, Kyle and Calumet City checked in. Brian would rather buy an Escalade for his family than a house. Hmm. <laughs> basically a house when you think about it. I really want an old school Escalade. It'd be great. <laughs> 
Uh, Kenzie. Omar, rubbing is racing when started by the Boy Scouts, not NASCAR. Mm, facts. And Mitchell checked in. Uh, bounce, bounce, take away. They don't want you to win, Kenzie Carey. Period. Don't want it. That's real. Uh, what's on the podcast, case? Stephen Jenkins of Third Eye Blind. He joined us today. That was a lot of fun. Also, uh, Brian talked about, again, buying an Escalade instead of a house. <laughs> <laughs> and you stopped watching The Bear right before the best episode. Well, I'm going to catch up. You're going to catch up this weekend. Can we talk about that on Monday? Will you promise to watch it? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> you don't believe me, why do you? Why are you lying why to my you face? Just, like, you laugh at uh, your own lie. So how many is after? Is there four more episodes? Or you, you, have, you have three more to watch in season two. But again, the series changes with the episode that you haven't seen. Okay, so there's only three more after the dinner scene that I can catch up. Okay. Yes. All right. I can do I'm that. I'm counting on you. Yes. Help me, Brian. You're my only hope. I will do that. <laughs> uh, you miss a moment, miss a lot. Go to the podcast at Q101.com, Spotify, Apple, wherever you find your podcasts. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101.